Unity 5.6 is released today. So I am here at the Unity download archive. And I come to the archive even though it was released today. But I could see that 5.6 was released on March 31st. And uh, so I'm going to hit here. Go to the Unity installer. This is the one that works the best for me. I've already done that. But let's go to the release notes and take a look at what's going on here. So we got the package downloads. We got the release notes for 5.6 F3. Now, first of all, we got some 2D uh, control with the tessellation, the quality of the sprites, the sorting groups. So you can see you can solve this problem. This is uh, stuff that I'm not really, I don't really work with uh, these 2D. Well, I do in the UI, but I don't, I've never run into this problem. So it never doesn't mean a lot to me. All right, moving on. We got the AI. We have a low level API for nav mesh building. And this is really cool because it allows you to do um, create and update nav mesh, da nav mesh data at runtime. And that's really good because let's say we have objects moving around the room. However, we're using nav mesh. We can rebake the nav mesh at, at runtime. Use multiple instances of nav meshes. Control the lifetime of the nav mesh instance. Create and manage nav mesh build settings for multiple agent sizes. That is really nice. Uh, so, an additional open source components and examples available here. So, this is going to be something really cool that looks, uh, uh, that's just a demo from Unity components for runtime nav mesh building. Um, nice little project on GitHub. Definitely, I'm going to check that out if I'm uh, doing something with the nav mesh. All right, we got moving on. We got animation. Asset import build pipeline. Um, here we go. Editor. Expose the following handles for the uh, Unity editor. Box, capsule, and sphere bounds. Uh, so if you do shift plus left mouse button, it's going to scale uniformly. Left mouse button, extend in one direction. And alt does... What does it do? Alt... Holds the um, alt pin center in place. So it pins the center in place. And this now works for the collider types. In the scene view. Um, drag it to expand the size on that one side. Hold alt to pin the center in place. And hold shift to scale the sh shape uniformly. And that works for the colliders. As well as the uh, box collider capsule sphere. All right. What else do we got? We got some editor updates. Um, Facebook is a new build target platform. Global illumination. Um, has the ability to bake shadow masks. Which is going to be really nice. Because we can see here with the shadow mask. It, both, it still looks great. But normally... These shadows would cost us almost double in draw calls. So you can see here, the shadow draw calls are 120. And over here with the shadow mask, the shadow draw calls are only two. So I don't know a lot about the shadow mask, but I do know that if it's reducing the amount of draw calls shadows take, that's really good, especially for mobile VR. So this is going to be something I'm probably going to have a video on this month uh today i'm just going to be skimming through this and in the future throughout the month i'm going to be releasing videos on each part that's new one of the new things is the light explorer um so now in my lighting window i should actually have the light explorer that's probably under my window and if i go to lighting light explorer so here's a brand new window that I might, uh, you know, dock over here by my lighting window. I don't know, but it allows me to see all of the lights that are in my scene, which is really nice. And uh, you can ch change all the light settings right there. All right, we got the new progressive light mapper. I've been waiting a long time for this one. So on the lighting, we've always had enlighten and... It works well, but the progressive light mapper 
looks really cool and looks even better because it looks like it does a lot better job of baking lighting in real time as we're doing level design uh, so we have the new progressive light mapper uh, robust light mapper based on path tracing with progressive updates it provides baked light maps and light probes presents the first output quickly and improves o over time global illumination is calculated at the light map resolution no dependency on enlighten so there's even an estimated time in the progress bar which we didn't have in enlighten it just got stuck forever until it was finished so you can see here that it looks really good the lighting looks great photorealistic photorealistic and I'm really excited about this uh, new lighting because light baking is always a huge pain. And look at here. Look how fast it can update all that uh, baked lighting when they just change the sun's position. So graphics, we got some new stuff. Um, support for procedural instancing. And where the instance data is supplied via a custom shader source or a custom source in the shader rather than material property blocks so we could see way too many stuff to be rendered but it looks like it might be able to render that through procedural instancing so I don't know too much about that um, but that looks really good <laughs> something that we definitely need when we're rendering hundreds or thousands of items Vulkan rendering has been added to the Android, Linux, and Windows. And this is really great because Vulkan gives us faster, better rendering. Um, it can, it may give us a chance to actually have some nice uh, graphics on mobile VR and still get that high frame rate. Some IL2 CPP updates, which is good. The IL2 CPP builds are really nice and those are supposed to perform better than the regular uh, builds and some multiplayer stuff some new particles added a new shape module controls to support non randomized particle emission so some new type new ways to emit particles and same thing down here redesigned burst emission for up to eight bursts and added burst repeat parameters so some new ways to emit particles. All right, we got the physics. Um, some 2D physics improvements. So that's really cool. I think it's combining uh, box 2D with polygon collider 2D colliders. And you can co com combine those together. More uh, 2D collider improvements. All kinds of really good looking uh, box 2D and collider 2d improvements physics debug a tool designed to provide a visualization of what's going on in the physics middleware allowing you to quickly inspect the collider geometry in your scene uh, so there's a new physics a debug and i see that here at window physics debugger so we got this new window right here too um, like I said, more videos coming soon, but this one should help us debug physics somehow. I need to learn about it. That's for sure. All right. Next up, we got uh, native daydream integration as a VR target for unity VR applications. So daydream and cardboard are of course now native parts of unity. And then we get some, uh, UI we got the video player component and I'm gonna be talking about this uh, quite a bit this month because I have a brand new asset for 360 video and um, and that works with this video player component as well with easy movie texture but if you use, used easy movie texture for 360 video you may be able to use the new video player component from unity so another really cool component and you can see here 
that uh, they're importing these mp4s into unity and then they can just drag okay, here we go we got mp4 files drag them into unity and then we can just drag it from our assets folder onto an object like a sphere and it's going to automatically add a movie render component to that and it's going to render that movie uh, so VR added initial Vulkan support for open VR again like I say and hopefully with Vulkan we can we can have more powerful better graphics in mobile VR um, VR we got native support for iOS iOS and then VR single pass stereo rendering support added for Google VR Google Daydream and Gear VR and that's really cool because it's a single single pass stereo render which means it only has to do one pass and it's rendered both cameras and that is under the build settings uh, when I got my VR supported here first of all I could select cardboard daydream oculus for gear VR but with cardboard selected I got my stereo rendering method and I have it set to single pass which is just a preview for now kind of like a beta feature but we can see that multi-pass stereo rendering will be used on Android devices that don't support single pass stereo rendering so I don't know yet what the difference is what the device needs in order to do a uh, single pass but you can always use the multi-pass which is normal which means it does one pass for one eye and then it has to do another pass for the other eye to render both eyes um, but the single pass stereo render is something that again might help perfu improve performance on mobile VR alright then we got changes we got some Android changes we got the uh, some editor changes graphic changes sometimes there's so much stuff in this list sometimes I just browse for the first word and see so VR alright that's iOS updated uh, the Google VR to 1.2 and then Android what do we got we got some Android at IL2 CPP and here's one that's interesting they've added a third spine bone called upper chest to the humanoid rig so just recently I've made some videos on how to rig a, a human um, spine or a human skeleton for Mechanon and that's always been three bones in the chest and it looks like they've added a fourth one so now there's an upper chest uh, so there's a new chest bone essentially in Mechanon so some more animation updates and again I'm seeing these editor updates um, it'd be it's it'd be good to sit down and read through all of these but uh, at least I at least skim through it and and look for stuff that I'm that I'm working with and is relevant to me or to VR and Android so again some nice multiplayer updates lots of particle updates um, HDR gradient editor particles huge improvement with particle collision against 2d colliders more particle updates particle updates physics updates all right we got some terrain uh, some terrain updates with the level of detail and VR attached VR AR devices now add their remote resolution to the game view size drop down in the editor and we updated the oculus gear VR version to 1.1 to fix the gear VR focus timeout issue API changes we got the assets build line editor graphics physics scripting terrain so nothing really nothing major to look at there and the API changes then we got the fixes and on fixes we have Android we've got some various Android fixes and again all these animation fixes and we're getting down to editor fixes and almost at the bottom we got some graphics fixes 
And now particle physics. Scene manager. Speed tree and terrain and UI updates. And we're down to VR. And we added support for restoring the device render and viewport scales after unplugging the device and plug back in. Fixed a crash in the editor that was triggered by setting the VR settings dot flag to true. Fixed an issue where the right camera view was rendered for scenes with two cameras present. And now we're down to known issues. And this one's not quite as important unless you're really having a problem. You could check here to see if it is a known issue. There's obviously some uh, known issues with the progressive light mapper. And there's some VR issues. Image effects need to be updated to work with the single pass stereo render for Android. Mirror mode is incompatible with single pass stereo rendering. There is no native controller integration yet for Daydream. So for controller use, please use the Unity SDK provided by Google. And for uh, Daydream, you may notice that the Daydream VR display is dimmer than other VR devices. This is by design and it means a prolonging battery life while in VR. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of new stuff I'm excited about. Um, for one, the cardboard support and daydream support native here in unity is nice. However, they've had that for a long time since 2016 with uh, Google daydream technical preview versions. And it's always had performance issues on my game. And I see other people report the same problem. And uh, luckily uh, this version, it's actually, they have fixed it unity. Let me know in a forum post a little while back that the F3 version of 5.6, they were actually going to fix the performance problem, and it looks like they have fixed it. I've built this to my device, and it runs at 60 frames a second, but there is something that I had to do in order to get that to work. I did have to go to the graphics uh, project settings under the quality, and you can see here for Android, I have only simple uh, allowed but basically what you need to do is you need to have the v-sync set to don't sync if the v-sync is set to any like every v blank then you'll see weird performance issues on this native build so make sure if you're using this native build of cardboard and that you have set your v-sync count to don't sync and that will also let your frame right here go up you know to 120 frames a second instead of getting capped at 60 which is which is uh your monitor's refresh rate so that being said we can build and run this without having the google vr sdk in here and everything works uh such as the such as the uh, rec the dot pointer here and uh, the the interaction system works so this works fine for cardboard development it is okay in my opinion to upgrade to 5.6 I've done enough testing with it to know that that it seems like it's running good um, as always, if you do have a current project, I encourage you to duplicate that project folder, rename it to something like I have here done, Castle Adventure 6.0. And so I've duplicated my folder, I've renamed it to 6.0. So I have, if this doesn't work out, I can still go back to my other folder It's it, and, and my game is still working. Um, but uh, stay tuned for more videos coming up about the 5.6 features i'm going to be having uh videos covering all the new features for example the progressive light mapper and how to use it as well as uh the physics debugger and the video player component for making 360 videos so stay tuned we got a lot more videos coming up today was just a quick preview and to let you know that 5.6 is released 
go ahead and download it and try it out. All right, guys, see you in the next video.